We're seeing green here at <laughs> VMON 2022. You're watching theCUBE, Dave Vellante and David Nicholson. Wrapping up our second day of coverage. Dave, good show, good to be, you know, again, good to be back. This is our third show in a row. We're at KubeCon as well, so theCUBE is, is out there, but same, every, every show we go to so far has been, most of the people here haven't been out in yeah. two plus years, yeah. right? And, and, and they're like, hey, let's go, let's hug, let's shake. I got my red band on because we've been on a lot of shows of so just being careful. <laughs> you know, hey, but it's great to see people back. Uh, Absolutely. Such a different vibe than virtual. Virtual sucks, everybody hates it. Now, but now, it's going hybrid. People are trying to figure that out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. It, it, it's, it's, in your view, what's different, what's the same? In terms of uh, in-person versus hybrid, kind of what's happened since? What's different being here now versus say 2019, not that you were here in 2019, but a show in 2019. I think there's, right now, there's a certain sense of, uh, of appreciation for the ability to come and do this. Mm -hmm. um, As opposed to ennui or oh, another show, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and uh, a personal opinion is that um, I think that the hybrid model moving forward is going to end up being additive. I don't know that, I don't, you know, people say we'll never go back to having in person the way we did before. Um, I'm holding out hope that that's not the case because I, I think so, there's so much value to the kinds of conversations that we have not only here on the set with folks in person, but just the hallway conversations, uh, the dinner conversations, um, those are so critical, uh, not only with between vendors and customers, but between different business units. Um, you know, I, I, I came into this thinking, you know, I know Veeam very well, I've known them since the beginning, um, but you think, I'm going to a conference to talk about backup software? And it wasn't like that at all. I mean, this is, this is an overarching, very, very interesting subject to cover. So how is it different? I think people are appreciative. I wouldn't say we're back full throttle 100% um, uh, back in the game yet, but, uh, but we're, we're getting there. Some of the highlights, Veeam now number one, statistical tie for first place in revenue. There aren't a lot of segments, especially in storage, where Dell is not number one I guess technically Dell is like, I don't know, half a percentage point ahead, but Veeam's going to blow by that unless Dell gets its data protection. Veeam has action. the luxury of focus. They can has focus the like a laser focus, on it. Right? That, that we, we saw this in the PC era where focused, we saw Dell's ascendancy because they were focused on PCs, right? Yeah. We saw Seagate on disk drives, Intel on microprocessors, Oracle on databases. And, and, and Veeam applied that model to what they call modern data protection. Um, and, and the, so the reason why we think they're going to go past is they're growing at 20 plus percent each year. And, and I can almost guarantee Dell's data protection business isn't, although it's been in a, I, I sense a downward slope lately. They don't divulge that data, um, and, but if they were growing nicely, they would be talking about it. So I think they've been kind of hiding that ball. But Dell, you know, you can't count those guys out. They're big. No, you can't. And, and there's always they don't a, like to lose. They got that EMC DNA still in them. Yeah, you take you can you might take your eye off the ball for a little while to focus on other things, but uh, I think it'll be healthy for the industry at large as Veeam continues to take market share. There's definitely going to be pushback from from others in the field. But, but the pure software play um, and you know that no hardware agenda thing and all that I think is is clearly in Veeam's favor. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, Dell's got other other strengths, as do others. I mean, this is, this is, let's not forget, this, this, this market is crowded and getting coming. You got, you got other players, new, new entrants like Cohesity and Rubik. Rubik, by the way, is the one I was kind of referring to that seems yeah. to be, you go to their LinkedIn, they seem to be pivoting to security. I was shocked when I saw that. I'm like, wow, is that just like a desperation move? Is that a way to get your valuation up? Is, that, is there something I'm missing? I, I don't know, I haven't talked to those guys in a little bit, need to get, get there. But Cohesity and Rubrik couldn't get to IPO prior to uh, you know, the, 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 the tech sell-off, the tech clash, if you will. Veeam didn't need to. Veeam's been 30% EBITDA and, and has had it right. for a while, so they've been, they caught lightning in a bottle years ago, and then now they got the inside capital behind them. Um, you got new entrants like, like Clumio, you got Commvault, is out there, you still got, you know, Veritas is still out there competing, and you know, a number of other, you get 
he got is wherever HP software landed in, in the micro, strate, uh, micro strategy, <laughs> no, not micro strategy, anyway, in that portfolio of companies that HP sold its software business to, you know, they're still out there. So, you know, a lot of ways to, to buy backup and recovery software, but these guys being the leaders, no surprise. Yeah, you know, it's, I, I have to say it, it to me, it's a classic story of discipline. Microfocus, sorry. Microfocus, yeah, that's right, that's right. You know, it's funny, I, I, I could see that logo on a, I know I've got a notebook at home. Um, but, but Veeam is a classic example of well-disciplined growth, where you're not playing the latest buzzword game and trying to create adjacent businesses that are really, that might sound sexy, but have nothing to do with your core. They've been very, very disciplined about their approach, starting with you know, looking at VMFS and saying, this is what we're going to do, and then branching out from there in a logical way. So, so they're not out ahead of the tips of their skis in a way that some others have, have gotten. And those, you know, sometimes swinging for the fence is great, but you can strike out that way also. And they've been hitting, you know, you could say they've been hitting singles and doubles just over and over and over again for years now. Well, and that's been a great strategy. You've seen this a lot. I mean, I, I think you watched this at EMC when you were there. You, it was acquisitions to try to keep the growth up. It was, it was great marketing. I mean, unbelievable marketing. Cloud meets big data. Oh! Yeah. And you'd hear on CNBC, EMC is the cloud company. You're like, eh, we can have a cloud. <laughs> right? So, so you, you, you've seen companies do that to your point about getting ahead of your skis. Beam's never done that. Beam's is like, eh, this is the product that works great. Yeah. Customers love it, they buy it. You know, we got the distribution channel set up, and so that's always been, been, been part of their DNA. Um, and I think the other piece is putting meat on the bone of the tagline of modern data protection. When I first heard that, I'm like, mm, okay. But then, when you peel the onion on that, the core is back up in recovery, a lot of focus on recovery, and then the way they, I remember, it was there in the audience when they announced, you know, support for bare metal. People went crazy. I'm like, Wow, okay, because they, they used to say, well, never, virtualization forever. Okay, so they beat that drum and you never say never in this business, do you? And then moving on to cloud and hybrid and containers and we're hearing about super cloud now and maybe there'll be an edge use case there. It's still unclear what that pattern is. We talked about that with Zeus, but it, it's not clear to me where you put your muscle yet in, um, in, in edge. But really being able to manage all that data. That is, people talk about data management, that starts to be data management. They've got a footprint that enables yeah. them to do that. Yeah, and I'd like to see that same disciplined approach that's gotten them here to continue. No need to get on board a hype cycle. Um, what I really love from a business execution perspective from Veeam is the fact that they know their place in terms of their strategic advisory role for end user customers, and their place is largely in partnership with folks in the channel, partners large and small. Um, in a couple of the conversations we had over the last few days, we talked about this idea that there are fewer and fewer seats at the table uh, working with customers. Customers can't have 25 strategic vendor partners, and a lot of smaller niche players that focus on something even as important as backup will pretend that they are, that they hold the same sort of strategic weight as a hyperscale cloud provider does. They pretend that they're going to be there in the CXO meetings um, when they're not. Veeam knows exactly how to best leverage what they do with customers, and that's through partners in the channel. The other thing is, um, new CEO, Anand Esseron, uh, the fifth CEO, I think I'm correct. Is that right? At Veeam, yes. Um, so, two founders, uh, and then when Peter McKay came on, he was co-CEO, uh, and then, um, yep, and let's see, I think, uh, yep, he's the fifth, okay. So, each of the CEOs kind of had their own mark, right? Um, and we asked Anand in the analyst thing, what do you want your legacy to be? And I, I loved his answer. He's like, this is a fragmented business with a lot of adjacencies, and we are the leader in revenue, but we only have 12% revenue share. I want to take that to 25%, 40%. 
that's like EMC had 30 plus percent of the storage market. Cisco, 60% of the networking market. Wow, if anybody could ever get there. But so 25 to 30% of a market, that's, that's big. Yeah. I liked his demeanor, thought he had a really good style, philosophy, well-spoken. So new leadership, obviously, insight brought him in to take them to the next level um, and, and really drive I, I got to believe, get ready for IPO. We kind of admitted that. Yeah, and, I, and IPO for them, one thing you mentioned is that um, in this case, this is not an IPO, let's high five and go to Vegas and uh, get table service because now we finally have money. Uh, they're not doing, they don't, you know, it, uh, obviously an injection in capital from an IPO is always a good thing or should be a good thing if handled properly, but that's not their primary driver. So it'll be very interesting to see if they can hit the timing right. Um, <laughs> How that, how that works out. Well, and, and Bill Largent was his, was his predecessor. Uh, he, he, he took over uh, once the company, excuse me, went private. Um, yeah, that phone backed up? I, I still get in the mic. Once the company went private, uh, well, no, they were always private. Once they got acquired for five plus billion dollars from Inside Capital, um, they, they put Bill in charge. Perfect choice for the transition. And it was like, okay, Bill, it's like when you're, my brother's a sailor. He says, hey, take, take the wheel. See that lighthouse or see that tree? Go for it, keep it on track. And that's what Bill did. It was perfect, and he knew the company, knew where all the skeletons were buried, and, and it was perfect, perfect transition for that. Now they're bringing in somebody who they feel can take it to the next level. They're at a billion. He said he could see five billion and, and beyond. So that's kind of cool. Um, the other thing was ecosystem. This company's got a really robust ecosystem. All the storage array vendors came on, the, the, the backup appliance companies you know, came on to the Cube and had a presence here. Why? Because this is where all the customers are. This is the leader in backup and recovery. Yeah. So they all want to partner with that leader. Now they're at, at the other shows as well uh, for the Veeam competitors, but frankly Veeam, Veeam competitors, they don't have, like you said, they're pure play. Many of them don't have a show like this, or it's a, mm -hmm. a smaller event. Um, and so, they got to be here. Uh, and I think the, the, the other thing was the ransomware study. What I really liked about yeah. Veeam is they not only just talked about it, they not only talked about their solution, they, sh they did deep dive surveys and shared a ton of data with guys that knew data, uh, Dave Russell and Jason Buffington, both former analysts, Russell was at Gartner, very well respected, top Gartner analyst for years. Jason Buff Buffington at ESG, who those guys did, always did some really good, and still do, deep research. So you had them representing that data, but sharing it with the community. Of course, it's, it's going to be somewhat self-serving, but it wasn't as blatant, it wasn't nearly as blatant as I often see with these surveys. Yeah. Vendor surveys, I'll look at them. I can tell within like seconds whether it's just a bunch of marketing, you know what, or there's real substance. Yeah. And this one had real substance to it. Yeah, and it's okay when substance supports your business model. Yeah, cool. It's, it's great. Good marketing. But I, <laughs> yeah. As an independent, I'm not going to use it. The whole industry can use this and build on it, yeah. I think. There were a lot of unanswered questions. I, what I love about Veeam is they're going back and they, they did it in February. They, they updated it just recently. Now they're going back and doing more because they want to get it by country. So they're making investments, and then they're sharing that with the industry. I love that. It'll be interesting to see if they continue it over time, how things change, if things change. Um, one of the things that we really didn't talk a lot about is, uh, and you know, it's, I know it's talked about behind closed doors, um, this idea of uh, stockpiling day zero exploits and the fact yeah, that a lot of these that. things, yeah. a lot of these problems arguably could have been headed off had our taxpayer funded organizations shared information with private industry in a more timely fashion. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we had, um, uh, uh, was it uh, Gina from AWS who gave the example of uh, the NotPetya uh, experience in the hospital environment. And that came directly out of, frankly, a day zero exploit that the NSA had identified years earlier within Microsoft's operating system. And uh, somehow others got a hold of that and used it for nefarious means. So the intent to stockpile and hang on to these things is always 
um, noble, but sometimes the result is uh, less than desirable. So that's, it'll be an interesting conversation. We, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the, the Kasten acquisition, the, the, the container data protection, small piece of the business today, uh, but it's strategic in the sense that yeah, absolutely. if you want to appeal to developers, if, 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 if you want to be in the cloud, you, know, you better be able to talk containers generally and Kubernetes specifically so you know, they got to play there as well. So. Well, they, they, they hit virtualization, cloud, containers. Maybe I'm missing something in between. But they seem to be ransomware catching waves effectively. Yeah. Ransomware uh, catching waves effectively. Uh, again, not in an artificial buzzword driven way, but in a legitimate disciplined business growth approach. That, uh, that's impressive. And I, and I think Danny mentioned this. We, he said we've been a PLG product led growth company um, and I think they're evolving now. We talk about platforms versus product. We still got, still a product company, uh, but they're, Billy, Billy wants to build out a super cloud. So we're watching that very closely. I, I think it is a thing. You know, I've been, got a lot of grief for the term super cloud. Some people wince at it, but it's, so there's something brewing, there's something different. That's not just cloud, public cloud, not hybrid cloud, not private cloud. It's across cloud, it's super cloud. All right, Dave, hey, it was a pleasure working with you this week. Always. Kind of funny, I mean, we were, the crew was out in, uh, in Valencia, Spain. Yeah. Uh, they'll, in fact, they'll be broadcasting, I believe, all the way through Friday. Uh, that's an early morning thing for the, uh, for the West Coast. And, but East Coast should be able to catch that easily. Of course, you can all check out all the replays on thecube.net. Also, YouTube, youtube.com slash siliconangle. Go to wikibon.com, there's some you know, research there. I publish every week and, and others do uh, as well. Maybe not as frequently, but uh, we have a great relationship with ETR. I'm going to poke into some data protection stuff in their survey, see if I can find some interesting uh, data there. And don't forget to go to siliconangle.com, which is all the news. This is theCUBE, our flagship production. We're out at VeeamOn 2022. Thanks for watching.